God bless everyone. We're getting ready to go into uh, the word of God tonight. And uh, we are starting in a new series, a new series. So Y'all come in tonight. The Lord is ready to bless us. Uh, we're going into a new series. Um, man, God has just been taking us um, through some old messages that I preached, um, some old series series that I preached and taking us back and then going over it again in the way of a, a Bible study so we can really, really dive into the word of God and really teach on it in a substantive manner. And so I'm just excited about what he wants to do. You want to hop on tonight and get this word. You want to hop on tonight because there is something so important that God wants to say. There's something so important that the Lord really wants to deal with us on that this is an opportunity to get in on this word tonight. So we're going to be talking about uh, the discipline that, that believers need in order to be successful, in order to walk this walk out. Um, and this is going to be a blessing to you. So I'm going to hop on myself and I'm going to share this word. Uh, tonight, invite somebody in, share this word. We're going to give uh, people maybe another minute to jump on on tonight. As always, we're looking for your interaction, looking for your comments. Uh, we're looking for your uh, your questions, your comments, your energy tonight, because that's all going to be felt. It's all going to be received tonight. So I'm going to hop on and share and then we're going to pray and then we're going to get going tonight. It's good to see y'all out there. Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on, come on and get this word tonight. I promise you it's going to bless you. Promise you it's going to bless you tonight. All right. All right. I just shared it. Come on in, everybody. Good to see you tonight. All right, we want you to, we want you to um, make sure you like and subscribe to our Facebook page. All right, so we're gonna we're about to get into it. Hey, Mika, how you doing? God bless you. We're praying for you and, and your family. All right, God is good. Let's go ahead and pray tonight because we want to get into this word. Father, we bless your name. We glorify you. We thank you for everything that you have done, every way that you have made. Lord, you are good. You are faithful. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for keeping us, God. We thank you that the strength of what your word provides to us and in our life. Father, we bless your holy and righteous name. And we ask you, God, to meet us tonight, God. Meet us wherever we are. Father, somebody's watching from their living room. Bless them right now. God, somebody's watching, oh, Lord God, while they're riding in their car. Bless them right now, God. Somebody's watching, Father, from various locations, oh, God. But we pray that the Spirit of the Lord would meet them right where they are. Father, touch us, encourage us, strengthen us tonight. And we thank you for the, the results that your word produces every single time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So we are ready to jump in um, on tonight. I tell you that God has been taking us back to some of our old series and allowing us to revisit some of the most influential words that our church has experienced, that we have grown through. And I asked the Lord to lead me, Lord, what next? What do you want me to say next? What do you want me to teach from next? And oh man, he's bringing us back. So there was this series originally was preached in 2008, and the Lord really blessed us on this particular teaching, the dynamics of discipline, the dynamics of discipline. This was July of, uh, not 2008, sorry, 2018. Did I say 2008? 2018, so two years ago. Two years ago, the Lord took us through this series, and tonight we're gonna revisit it and allow God to impart and to strengthen us on this word on tonight. So, first thing we wanna do is uh, when you think about the word discipline, all right? Um, a lot of us think of, you know, discipline uh, in the sense of uh, punishment, 
all right, of, of, of punishment. Uh, we think of discipline as far as uh, correction. And that's one of the definitions for discipline. But there is another definition for discipline that is equally as important. Um, and the other definition for discipline is the one that we want to use in the verb sense. So there's discipline that's the noun, but there's discipline in the verb sense, which basically means to train, uh, to train, okay, to train. And so as believers, we need discipline spiritually. Discipline and self-control and focus is one of the most important aspects of our spiritual walk and our spiritual life. And I'm going to unpack that tonight with the help of the Holy Spirit tonight so we can get an understanding of how discipline really must be at the core of our walk with God in order for us to have successful uh, spiritual lives. All right, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Let's go into this word on tonight. So first scripture I want to go to is uh, 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9, I'm going to read verses 25 and 20, 25 through 27. Somebody put that in the comments for us, uh, for those that are following. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 25 through 27, and we're going there. Somebody put that in the comments, and uh, we're going to read it. We're going to read it, and I want you to see, uh, this is the Apostle Paul talking. Thank you. My wife put it up for us. God bless you. Uh, all right, so here we go. Let's get into this word. It says this words, all athletes are disciplined in their training, right? And they do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. My God, I like that last part. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So Paul begins to say, I discipline myself. I exercise spiritual discipline. I exercise spiritual control. I exercise the, 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 the training of my will so that I will be able to carry out the purpose and the intent of God in my life. All right. Somebody just say, I need spiritual discipline. I need spiritual discipline. OK, um, so I'm going to look at another scripture. Let's look at another scripture. Um, let's look at another scripture. Luke, Luke 9, Luke 9, Luke 9, 61 and 62. Elder Graves, God bless you. It's good to see you. <laughs> uh, Luke 9, 61 and 62. Somebody put that in the comments. And we are going to uh, look at this scripture. Luke 9, 61 and 62. Here's what it says. All right. Here's what the word of the Lord says. It says, and another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me say goodbye to my family. First, let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts their hands to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. Wow. All right. Um, wow. Discipline. Discipline. All right. Let's look at uh, we'll come back. We'll come back to another to another passage. All right. But I want to I want to I want to get you to understand this um, is that there is a need in the life of every single believer to possess and to exercise spiritual discipline. OK, so let me give you let me give you the simple definition for what discipline is when it comes to your spiritual walk. All right. Spiritual discipline is this discipline is doing what you know you have to do even when you don't feel like doing it. Doing what 
doing what you know that you have to do, even when you don't feel like doing it. We need the discipline, discipline, not the discipline that is the same, the word, you know, the, the noun talking about the, the punishment uh, or, or the consequences. But we need discipline, the mental fortitude and the training uh, to, to cause ourselves to see victory. All right. So discipline is doing what you know you have to do, even when you don't feel like doing it. One of the things that um, that amazed me is uh, I heard, you know, Kobe Bryant pass at the beginning of this year. But I heard stories and stories and stories after story of uh, Kobe Bryant's uh, work ethic. Kobe Bryant's work ethic. So like, for example, I heard one story of how this guy uh, with the game might have been at seven o'clock, right? The game might have been at 7 p.m. And Kobe Bryant would uh, show up at the gym at four o'clock and that he would just begin to go through drills and begin to go and keep on uh, putting up shot after shot after shot. He was the first one to arrive and oftentimes in practice, he was the last one to leave. All right. And so and so you would think someone with that natural born skill level uh, would at some point begin to rely on what they know that they could do. But no, that that his work ethic pushed him to show up before anybody else did and to stay later than the next guy. And it was his discipline that allowed him to achieve greatness in the NBA. All right. So I use that analogy to say that anybody who will do something great, who will be something great, who will ever go beyond the mediocre. One of the things you must possess is that you must possess spiritual discipline. Uh huh. Yeah. If you're going to be anything beyond mediocre, if you're going to be anything beyond average, if you're going to be anything beyond just uh, run of the mill, you must possess spiritual discipline. Now, I'm not just talking about just being having grand dreams to make it, you know, to make a bunch of money. I'm talking about if you want to have a, 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 a greater than mediocre ministry. If God has called you for ministry and you want to have a greater than mediocre ministry, you must have discipline. If you are in a relationship, if you're in a marriage or in a relationship and you want your relationship and your marriage to be more than just blah, more than just average, it's going to take discipline. If you want to do anything, even in your career, if you want to do anything that's going to require you to be great or to see promotion or to see blessing on it, you must exercise discipline. For so many times, we have expected God to bless our lives and to bless our relationships and to bless our ministry and to bless our finances, but we don't want to exercise the discipline that it takes to in order to see progress and in order to see blessings. Now, I'm going to make it plain in a minute. I'm going to make it plain, all right? So no one ever reached greatness. No one ever reached greatness without having a certain level of discipline, all right? So the for, for many of us, we lack discipline to reach our full potential. Yeah, you're operating, you're getting by, you're doing this, you're doing that. But in order to reach your full potential, I'm telling you right now, we must exercise or possess discipline. And the Holy Spirit is going to help us tonight. The Holy Spirit is going to help us through the word to learn how to get to exercise dis discipline. So here's what we do. We we have the tendency to, to, to start things and we get excited about it. We start things, we get excited about it. Uh, emotionally, we are charged up because something is new. Uh, we get obsessed with new things, with new uh, new activities. We get obsessed with new things. We we imagine, we have the tendency to imagine everything from the onset as if it will always be all good, right? Um, we don't really think about uh, potential obstacles. We don't think about uh, the pros and the cons. We don't think about uh, challenges that we may have to face uh, and different things like that. And so as time goes by, as time goes by, uh, that activity or that relationship or that, that, that new thing that we endeavor to do, uh, it ends up being harder than what we expected. All right. It ends up being harder than what we expected. And then what do we generally do? We bail out. 
Uh, we bail out or we do this. We settle for less than God's best. I know I'm talking to somebody tonight. I know I'm talking to somebody tonight. So, so most of us are good at starting things and most of us are good at beginning things, but we lack the discipline to maintain or we lack the discipline to follow through and see it through to the end. All right. Because when we start something new, it feels good. When we start something new, it, 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 you know, it brings us excitement. Like, like you get on the new job. I said this when I preached this. I said, you get on the new job and let's say you haven't worked in months. You haven't worked in months and, and you've been praying and you've been seeking and God blesses you with the new job and you have been, you are so grateful and you're so thankful and you get on the new job and you're ready to come, come in the door and you're going to be an asset to the company. You're going to be a, a, a model employee because you're so grateful. And uh, you come, you, you show up uh, uh, before time. You show up 15, 20 minutes early. Uh, the boss asks you to stay late. You're willing to stay late because you are just so grateful. And so the, those feelings, though, those feelings of gratefulness after you set in for about six months, after you set in for about 90 days, those feelings begin to wane. And then here come all of your bad habits once again. Here comes all of your bad habits once again that caused you to not excel or exceed in the last job. Uh-oh. The last thing that caused you to lose that job or to get or, or to not excel and then all those bad habits begin to come back. So now uh, where you started off with the proper exercises of discipline, you were on time. You were before time. Uh, you were doing all these things right. You were giving it your best effort. You were trying to learn new things and apply yourself. Now all of a sudden your bad habits begin begin to come back. Mm, my God. And now uh, you're doing things like showing up late. You're doing things like <laughs> you used to be happy just to have the job. Now a customer walks in the door. You're like, oh my God, uh, I got to I got to actually do work today. <laughs> Oh my God! And this not this not only transcends into into um, the natural with your job, but what about relationships? Yeah, what about when you get in a new relationship? You get in a new relationship, and the feelings of love are there and excitement because it's new, uh, and so you're just ready. You got you're you're ready to explore. You're ready to learn. But then comes those bad habits again of things that we do that we don't have the discipline on, and then we begin to cause relationships to go south, and things start coming back up like we've seen these old habits and these old things before you done seen these patterns before we need discipline in your spiritual walk you need spiritual discipline so now let's go back to the scripture because paul says he says he's he says all athletes are disciplined in their training and they do it to win a prize that will fade away but we do it for an eternal prize so I run with purpose in every step. In other words, I don't have time to be wasting time. When it comes to my spiritual life, I must have dis discipline. He says, I am not just shadow boxing. Mm. Shadow boxing is, is just where you're, you're, you're uh, exhausting energy without a real target or without a real opponent. Come on. Some of you have been exhausting energy, wasting time on things and people that do not matter. You've been focusing your energy. You've been focusing uh, 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 the wrong attention on stuff that does not add to your purpose. It does not add to your growth. It does not add to you winning. It does not add to you going further in God. And you're giving your attention to the wrong things. Lord, give us discipline today. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah. We need discipline. We need discipline. And then he goes on to say, he says, otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be found disqualified. And so he says, you have to approach your spiritual walk and your spiritual life and even the things in the natural. You have to approach it and understand that if anything that's going to require you to be great is going to require much discipline. Come on. Oh, my, my God. My wife says sometimes we major on the mind. Yeah, we major on the minors, meaning that we put all of our attention and focus on stuff that really doesn't amount to much, on stuff that's not going to be beneficial to our progress. Why are you still focused on who don't like you? 
Why are you still focused on who talk bad about you? Why are you still focused on the wrong things that don't that 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 don't require uh, that will not amount to your success? Come on. Come on. I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to go deeper on tonight. I'm going to go deeper on tonight. So whenever the feelings wear off, the feelings of the, that new thing, that new euphoria wear off, we oftentimes don't, don't have the discipline to maintain certain blessings that God places in our hands. This is why things slip out of our hands. Things come and they go because we have not exercised the discipline to maintain. We have not exercised the discipline to finish what we started. And that's why Jesus, when he put, when he picked it up, Jesus picked it up. He said, he says um, in these words, he says in Luke 9, 6 through 6, 61 through 62, he says, uh, Jesus was calling somebody. He was calling somebody and he says, he told the man, come follow me, follow me, follow me. Come be one of my disciples. God was calling him out to greatness. We don't know what this man would have been. We don't know where, what the calling of God was on his life. And he says, yes, Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me say goodbye to my family. And so he left Jesus and he gave, he gave the excuse to say, I can't be great right now. I can't walk in that right now. I can't do it because I got other things on my mind. How many of us have been distracted from the greatness that God is calling us to because we were looking at the wrong thing? We were focused on the wrong thing. Oh yeah, there's greatness inside of you. And Jesus said these words. He says, no man that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom. You must have discipline. You must have focus. Okay. So, so let's go back to it. All right. Most of the time we are good at starting things, but we don't finish. We don't finish. We don't finish. We're good at starting it. How many of you have started that diet? Oh my God. How many of you have started that diet? You said in your mind, I am going to lose this weight or I am going to begin to eat healthy. I am going to do it. And so we start things, but we don't finish. You want to know why? Because we run out of stamina because of lack of discipline. I know I'm talking good tonight. Woo, we, 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 we start it, but we don't finish. We don't come with the follow through. And God says, one of the principles that I want to put in you is the ability to have uh, uh, temperance or self-control or discipline. Discipline is one of the fruit of the spirit. How many of us have said, you know, that we are going to break a certain bad habit? I'm going to break a bad habit. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to get over this. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, do this or do that. But we lack the discipline to maintain sometimes even our own deliverance. Come on. My God, I'm going, I'm going to start next week. That's what we say. <laughs> I'm going to start next week, but it requires discipline. It requires discipline. How many of us said that we were going to save money? I'm going to save money. I'm going to exercise discipline. I'm not going to get back in debt. I'm not going to uh, uh, repeat the cycles that caused me to get in trouble. All right. But then we end up doing the same behavior again because we don't exercise the discipline. I want to speak to somebody and let somebody know that God is getting getting ready through these the, the course of these next couple of weeks to bless us with the ability, the revelation of, of understanding what it will take to have discipline, discipline in our natural life, discipline in our relationships, discipline in our money, discipline concerning our bodies, discipline concerning our prayer life, discipline concerning our goals and our vision. You need discipline. Come on, come on, somebody. You need discipline. All right. So, so Jesus, who was the son of God, he was a son of God, but yet he was disciplined. He had to discipline his own flesh. This is why Jesus, even though he was the son of God, had an extensive prayer life. He had an extensive prayer life. Every time you read it in the scripture, it says Jesus went off to a certain place to pray and he laid before the father and he stayed before the father. And we look at Jesus and we say, oh, he was sinless and oh, he was so powerful. But in order to be great, you must have discipline. Jesus would have not been able to walk in the anointing and the authority and the power and the sinlessness that he possessed if he did not have the 
discipline to to make a regimen of spending time with the father. And sometimes the problem with us is that the reason why we don't have the stamina to make it through is not because we don't have the will or the heart. It's because we don't have the discipline. I'm going there tonight. Come on. I'm going there tonight. I see you. I see you. Brandy says so true. So true. And, and, and it really is. Jesus said it like this. Come, Jesus said it like this. He says uh, in Matthew 26 and 41, Matthew 26 and 41, get that scripture. Matthew 26 and 41. He says that the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is indeed willing but the flesh is weak. Come on, somebody share this word. Somebody share this word because this is going to bless somebody. This is going to bless somebody. Matter of fact, I got to go to Matthew 26 right quick. I got to go to Matthew 26. I have to go to Matthew 26 because I want to look at this. I want to look at this in the scripture. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And I want to reveal something to you tonight. Let's go there. All right, I'm hopping over to uh, Matthew 26. All right, so starting at verse 31, right? Verse 31, Jesus says these words. He, and then Jesus says to them, uh, well, let me switch. I'm going to switch to the, I'm going to switch to the New Living Translation. All right, verse 31. And Jesus says this. He says, on the way, Jesus told them, tonight, all of you will desert me. For the scripture says, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Watch this. Uh, but after I have risen from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Now watch what Peter says. Watch Peter. Y'all know Peter. Peter says these words. Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. That sounds like some of us. That sounds like some of us because it's not a will issue. It's not a heart issue. It's a discipline issue. And so Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you even know me. Verse 35. No, Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples then begin to vow the same. All right. So that is that is the heart's intent. That is the heart's intent. I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to save money. I'm going to break this habit. I'm going to stop this sin. I am going to excel in, in, in my career. I am going to go back to school. I am going to open that business. I am going to write the book. I am going to do better as a parent. I'm going to do better as a husband. The will is there. The will is not the issue, y'all. The will is not the issue. Come on, somebody put that in the comments. The will is not the issue because in your heart of hearts, you love God. There are some things that you went to the altar to, you went to the altar for, and you meant it. God, forgive me. I ain't going to do it no more. You meant it. You, there are some things you prayed and you meant it. It's not the will. It's the discipline. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in the word. It's not the will. It's the discipline. All right. So going forward, then look at verse 36. I'm going to show you where is the discipline. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over there to pray. And he took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. And he told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And he went on a little farther and bowed his face to the ground. And he began to pray. He began to pray. This is where he says, not my will, but your will be done. Look at verse 40. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. And he said to Peter, couldn't you watch with me for even one hour? Keep watching, pray so that you will not give in to temptation for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. There it is right there. There it is right there. The will is not the issue. Come on, Elder Grant tonight. The will is not the issue. It is the, it is the discipline that is the issue. So here it is. Peter says, 
I will never deny you, Lord. I don't care what happens. I will never deny you. He, that's like us at the altar. That's like us vowing to change. That's like us vowing to start. That's like us vowing to, 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 to do it, to go forward. We, we mean it in our hearts. We want better. We want greater. But if you don't have the discipline, you will not see the manifestation of what your mouth confess. Come on. Come on. And so, and so when Jesus, when, when, when push come to shove and Jesus like now is the time where your prayer life is going to carry you to the next level. The disciples were on Facebook. Oh yeah. Now when it was time to do it, when it got hard, they were asleep. Now when it became time to go to, to, to find the strength so that temptation didn't overtake them, they lacked the discipline. They were too busy. They were too busy being distracted by other things. In this particular case, they were asleep. Now Jesus said, my soul is in anguish. I'm about to go through the hardest hour that I've ever been through. I need you to watch and pray with me. And not only for me, but pray for yourselves that you will not fall into temptation. And they lack the discipline to see the victory. Now, let me pose something to you. What is it in your life that God wants to do, but you just lack the discipline to see it? Oh my God, you lack the discipline to, to, to see the manifestation of that thing. What is it? This, this is hard questions on tonight. All right, so to, to will and to wish is not enough. You can mean it in your heart, but you will never carry it out unless you have the discipline. Watch this. Discipline is the framework that sets up your victory. Discipline is the framework that allows you to see manifestation. Wow. Discipline is the framework that allows you to see manifestation. It's the framework that allows you to see victory. Okay, let's make it practical. Let's make it practical, okay? We said earlier, discipline is doing what you know you have to do even when you don't feel like doing it. And so we don't reach full potential. And so we bail out. My God, sometimes we, we quit whenever, whenever the feeling wears off, whenever the excitement wears off. All right. And so we, we, we don't see it through to the end. We don't see it through to the end. All right. So in order, in order to uh, exercise discipline, we've got to depend on the strength of the spirit in order to break cycles in our life. We've got to learn to depend on the strength of the spirit in order to break cycles in our life. It takes God's power to walk in certain disciplines. It takes God's power to walk in certain disciplines. My God. Woo, it takes God's power in order to walk in certain disciplines. All right. So so watch this. So watch this. I'm, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at some of the comments. Look, uh, so discipline is the framework that allows you to see uh, manifestation. That's so good. That's so good. Mm. My sister, Minister Davis, says they are they're really not hard questions because the answer is right in front of our face. But we have to face the hard truth. That's good tonight. That is good tonight. So watch this. Sometimes. We have got to depend on, like I said, the strength of the spirit to break cycles in our life. All right. And so um, I found out a lot of times is that a lot of things in our life that cause us watch this. A lot of things in our life that cause us the most pain and the most heartache. It's not the devil doing it, but rather it's the lack of discipline. Oh, my God. I just said something tonight. A lot of things that cause us pain and a lot of things that cause us to, to, to not see breakthrough and a lot of things that we, we we like to blame it on the devil. No, the devil was sitting back like, you, why are you blaming me for that? That's all you. We lack the discipline. Sometimes we go through financial storms, all right, that we brought upon ourselves. Sometimes we go through uh, different things and it's not the devil doing it, but we lack discipline. All right. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. All right. You have to come to a place where you cannot always deflect the responsibility of certain things. All right. It is the definition of insanity 
is getting uh, when you get the negative result, but you continue to do the same thing. Somebody said that that somebody that's an old proverb that said that's the example of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Right. So watch this. We we uh, let's say let's say my discipline is my eating habits, my eating habits. And so I begin to eat poorly and I begin to uh, not exercise discipline in my exercising and in my eating. Right. And then when a health crisis hits high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, 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 all, uh, any of these kind of things, uh, any of these kind of things hit. And then you go to the doctor and oftentimes they will tell you that that uh, medicine won't solve this. All you need is some discipline. You got to change some habits. And so we want to have Watch what church folk do. Watch what church folk do. We want to go to God for the miracle. And God is trying to get us to operate in the principle. So we exercise poor discipline. And then we come to God like, Lord, heal me miraculously heal me. I've been eating wrong for 15 years, but I need you to bring down this blood pressure. I have been eating wrong. You know, I, I've, I've broken every single uh, cycle. I've broken every single, every single time I said I was going to do it. I was going to eat better. I was going to exercise better. We say I was going to do this and do that. And then we want God to bless us in the miraculous when God was like, I was trying to get you to exercise in the discipline of the principle. He says, he says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And when you got the, when I tried to give you the revelation that if you would do this and this and this, that I would cause you to walk in a level of health where you didn't need the pills, where you didn't need uh, the doctor visits and you didn't need Oh my God. And you didn't need the miracle because you operated in the principle. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. My God. Sometimes we want God to, to step in. I'll give you another example. Sometimes we want God to step in and we're like, God, um, I need you. God, I need you right now because I'm about to lose this or I'm about to lose that. I'm about to lose my car. Or I'm about to lose my apartment. I'm, or, you know, God, um, they're about to turn off my lights or, or whatever the case might be. And we're needing God to come through for a miracle. And, you know, in God's God will do it. He will sometimes come through in a miracle when you have no other answers. But sometimes you got to understand that some things happen by the principle. And because we wanted to splurge instead of save. Now, when a rainy day hits, we think God owes us a miracle. Yeah, we think God owes us a miracle. We think God owes us a miracle, but he said, I was telling you to save, to be a good steward. I was telling you to, to, to tithe and to give. I was telling you to do these different things so that you would operate on the principle and not have to depend on the miracle. My God. <laughs> oh, this is good tonight. I see y'all out here. I see y'all out here laughing. I see this. I see the faces, but I know I'm talking right. I know I'm talking right. I know I'm talking right. God gives you the principle of stewardship. He gives you the principle of discipline, right? And so sometimes here's another one. Here's another example. Oh, good. That's good. That's good, Lady K. You don't need the miracle if you operate in the principle. Woo! That's good right there. You don't need the you don't need the miracle if you operate in the principle. Come on. Come on, come on. God, God uses miracles. He uses miracles to let you know, to demonstrate his power. But he wants to bring you into principle to show you his favor. He wants to bring you into principle. God took Israel through the wilderness, wilderness, through a desert wilderness. Israel was through a wilderness, desert. They needed manna. They needed water from a rock. They needed quail. They needed their shoes to miraculous, miraculously not run out. And he provided for them a miracle while they were in a wilderness season. But when they got to the promised land, the promised land was flowing with milk and honey. And all they had to do was work the principle. Oh, my God. Oh, God, this is good tonight. This is good tonight. 
Uh, <laughs> my brother, my brother Alex Holmes, man, he said, I don't blow my birthday money. Listen, you better operate under the, under the principle. See, God will take you through a season where you need the miracle, but he doesn't want you to stay in a wilderness mindset where you always need miracles. Come on. Sometimes you got to graduate till he brings you to promise where you begin to operate in principles. So God says, I need a people that if they're going to be great in anything that they do, if you're going to be great in your career, you've got to have discipline. Sometimes you've got to show up before everybody else shows up. You've got to put in the work. And when you put in the work and you are you are applying yourself, God says, when I see the discipline, that's when promotion will come. Some of you have been making the same amount of money for year after year. And if you only would get the discipline, God said promotion would follow your discipline. Come on. We're expecting God. How do we expect? We, when, 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 the, when the prophetic word comes that God's about to make some of you millionaires. God's about to bless some of you in a financial with a financial increase more than you've ever seen before. And we just think it's going to drop out the sky. No, it's not going to drop out the sky. God's going to have to promote somebody. He's going to have to call somebody to get a business idea. He's going to have to call somebody that to, 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 to excel in your field. He's going to have to call somebody to get. Uh, to, see, it's not just going to happen because you wish it. It's not just going to happen because you shouted and danced in church. It's going to happen because God gives you. He birthed something, birthed something in you that's going to require your discipline to, to see it to manifestation. My God, come on, somebody. This is good tonight. So so sometimes the things that cause us the most pain, the most heartache in our life is not the devil doing it, but it's rather our lack of discipline. God says there's certain things that you can discipline your way and get out of. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Another thing that I found, another thing that I found is this, and I'm, I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna give you a couple points and we're gonna be done for tonight. Church folk love, church folk love to want a moment to fix years of lack of discipline. We want the preacher to deliver us out of our stuff. We want the preacher to prophesy to me. I want the preacher to prophesy to me and I want the preacher to lay hands on me and deliver me from stuff that I will not have discipline to be able to maintain. What am all right? When I when I when I preach the message, I, I gave this example. When I preach the message, I gave this example. We want to come to an altar and and cry and say, "Lord, deliver me from my lust issue. Deliver me from my lust issue." I'm just using an example. Deliver me from my lust issue. And we want the preacher to lay hands on us and cause us to get delivered. We roll on the floor, you know, we get we get that breakthrough, that deliverance, we cry, we snot, all this other stuff. But then we're going to go back and we're going to watch the same things on television. We're going to listen to the same lustful music. We're going to watch the same lustful things. We're still going to hang around the same lustful demons, the same lustful people that we know got spirits. And then we want deliverance to take place in a church service for two hours in church. But yet we won't have the discipline to be able to get free. See, your deliverance requires a level of discipline. Your maintaining your deliverance requires a level of discipline. There's certain things that you have got to do that you've got. Paul said, I make myself do certain things. I discipline my body. I don't always feel like it, but I discipline myself. Sometimes I've got to do some things that I don't want to do. I found out church people a lot of times. Oh, God, we don't like to pray beyond a five minute prayer. But your discipline, the discipline that's going to take for you to reach greatness is going to require you to pray more than five minutes. Yeah, we don't like to turn down our plate and fast, but the discipline that is going to require you to see the manifestation of God is going to require you to have discipline. The discipline is going to require you to make some hard decisions or hard choices. If you're going to be great at anything, I'm talking about great marriages. I'm talking about great in your career. I'm talking about great in your spiritual gift. In order for me, if I don't, if I just want to be a, a, a average, an average pastor, an average leader, then I'm not going to put no study time in. I'm not going to invest any, any, anything 
to, to dig into the and dig into it and study and apply myself and become a master at my craft. You must put discipline in if you're going to get anything great out of anything that you do. The old saying, no pain, no gain. That is so true because when you discipline yourself, it's not going to feel good. It's not going to feel good, but it's going to, it's going to produce a harvest. All right. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here tonight. All right. Here's what I want to do. And then we're going to end for tonight. This is, I know that this is blessing somebody. I want to give you six steps to walk in discipline, six steps to walk in discipline. And then we're done. Six steps. Six steps to walk in your discipline. Man, Lady K says, this needs to be shared. My God, I'm telling you, this is for somebody. Brandy says, how bad do you want it? How bad do you really want what you're asking God for? It's going to require discipline. Oh God, some of us spend too much time in television for you ever to accomplish your goal. You can sit up here and watch all these shows and do all this stuff, but that's not going to produce the greatness of the vision that God gave you. Some of us spend more time in social media, way more time in social media, scrolling up and down people's timelines, and we wonder why we're not seeing anything great in our life. You are distracted. You, you don't, you're not exercising the discipline that is needed to see what God showed you. Come on, let's get off of Facebook so much. Let's get off of, uh, off of Instagram so much. Let's get off of television so much. Turn your face back to, to God and back into prayer. It's going to require discipline to see the blessing of God. You're never going to, some of us put our energy, we, we, we put all our focus into negative energy. Who don't like me? Who, who, who's talking about me? Who didn't support me? That is never going to cause you to see your goal and your dreams. Come on, get your focus back. I don't have time to focus on haters. I, I Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, I got to keep my eyes on him. If I'm looking at who don't support me and who don't like me and who talk bad about me and who hurt me and all this stuff, I will never reach my goal. I've got to be focused and disciplined. Anybody who will see anything great, anybody who will be anything great, anybody who will accomplish anything, I guarantee you they have a disciplined life, a disciplined regimen, stuff that they do every single day and they will not stop, stuff that they do and they will not let their pattern be broken. It requires discipline. Come on. I'm going to give you the six steps, six steps to begin to develop discipline. Do you got your pen and paper out? Come on. I need you to take notes. You're not going to just get this off of one time. You're not just going to get this off of one, one setting. That's the problem with us. We want to hear one word in church and think that's going to fix years of dysfunction. Ooh. We, we want to get one, one, uh, 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 one, shed a little bit of tears at the altar and think that that's going to be the end of your deliverance. No, baby, that's not going to be the end of your deliverance. You've got to labor over this thing. You've got to, you've got to seek God. You've got to put these things in place to get your breakthrough, to see, see it through to your blessing. Come on. Thank you. My sister Mika said the game's on the phone. You sitting playing games on the phone, games on the phone, uh, just taking and robbing you of your time, right? Here we go. Six steps, six steps. Y'all ready to write? Y'all ready to follow with me? Number one, you must become aware of your patterns of starting and stopping. You must become aware of your patterns of starting and stopping. Yeah, you got to have some self-introspecting. You got to be real. You've got the you've got to identify the areas where you need more discipline. This is good. What is the what is the goal and what is the thing that causes you to stop the goal? Stop at the goal. You must begin to identify what patterns you have of. Listen, I done started this. I started good. I started back praying. Then I stopped. I started back reading my word and then I stopped. I started, I started to apply myself into study and to read. Yeah, because I wanted to get into investing. I wanted to get into investing. I wanted to get into uh, 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 causing my money to make money for me. And I was going to do it. And I was going to study. And I, I know it was going to require me to put some hours in. And I was going to require me to read some books or, or to do this or to do that. But then, oh, this caused me to stop. 
this call. You got to identify your pattern of stopping and starting. And you got to have a hard conversation with yourself and identify what hindered you. You did run well. What hindered you? Come on. Come on. Come on. What hindered you? What did you start doing that you stopped? So many of you have good dreams in you, good visions in you, good ideas, but you stop short. And God is like, I want to release the blessing. I wanted to bless through that avenue, but you stop because somebody was hating on you, because somebody's because somebody else was doing what you what what you what God showed you to do. And you were like, oh, well, somebody else is already doing it. No, 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 no. You got to keep your hands to the plow and keep going. All right. So the first thing. Become aware, self-awareness. Sometimes we don't want to look in the mirror because looking in the mirror is hard. Yes, I quit on that dream. I stopped on that assignment. I was doing good in this area, but I quit. I started to look, I started to work out. And because I only lost five pounds in a month, I was like, man, you know, this I, I quit. I give up. It's too hard. Uh, I, I started to save money, but because I had a challenge, I, I went back into my old habits. Uh, you know, all of these things. I started working on my marriage, but I got discouraged and I stopped working on my marriage. Come on. Come on. You got to identify the areas where you stop. All right. Number one is become aware of your patterns. Become aware of the things that become obstacles in your life. All right. Number two. Number two. Let's go. Before jumping into things, before jumping into things, you got to do like Jesus says and count the cost. You got to count the cost before. See, here's another area where we do. We jump into things and then we want to bail out because we didn't anticipate the obstacles. We didn't anticipate the challenges. This is why we jump into certain uh, responsibilities and then we bail out. We jump into relationships and then we bail out. We jump into ministry assignments and then we bail out. But sometimes you got to learn this. You got to know. Uh, you got to know that you got to count the cost. Okay, before you jump into it, learn. Watch this. Learn what others have experienced when they were aiming towards the same goal. See, sometimes you got to surround yourself with people who have been successful in the area that you are trying to master. You got to surround yourself with mentors who can tell you, do this, try this, don't do this. I've been there. This will always cause you to trip up. This will always cause you to have a setback. You got to, you've got to invest in studying and learning some things before you dive in. Because again, the, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And if you don't, if you don't anticipate the challenges, all right, if you don't anticipate what, all right, well, let's say, let's say that, um, I want to start being on time to work. I want to start being on time to work and it's in your heart to be on time to work. Watch this. This is going to make sense. It's going to make sense. It's going to make, make sense for you to be more punctual. Your issue is not your heart wants to be more punctual. Your issue is discipline. Because you didn't prepare any clothes the night before. You didn't iron anything the night before. You didn't put your keys and your and your work materials in a set spot so that you don't have to be looking for your keys and looking for this and looking for that. Your issue was not the heart. Your issue was your disciplines. And so if you begin to identify the areas where you lack the discipline, then you will be able to begin to overcome the obstacles. Ooh, that's good. That's good. That's good. So I'm going to pick out my clothes the night before and I'm going to iron them the night before. All I was doing was watching television and scrolling on Facebook. I had 15 minutes to prepare. Oh, God, come on. And so and so when you wake up that next morning, your clothes is ready. This is in order. That is in order. The kids are in order. And you're able to arrive 15 minutes ahead of time because you got the discipline to win now. Oh, God, where do you want to win in life? Where is the area that you've been failing? Where is the area that you've been struggling? Where is the area that you want to win? I dare you to apply more discipline in that area. I'm, I'm, oh God, I'm teaching, I'm teaching better than y'all liking out. <laughs> 
The area where you want to win is the area where you need to apply more discipline. The area where you want to be more, where you want to be stronger in is the area where you need to put more weight on. Come on, weightlifters. Where you, the area where you want to be stronger, you got to put more weight, more force, more pressure on. Okay. So you got to identify and learn what are the obstacles. All right. You got to surround yourself with mentors who have already been there or somebody who does it well. And you can learn from those in order to reach your goal to be more successful. Don't just jump into things and you haven't count the cost. Don't just commit to things and you have not researched it. Oh, I want to open up a business. Yeah, I want to open up a business. I think I'm gonna open up. Uh, I think I'm gonna open up. You know, a a a a bakery or whatever, whatever. Because I made a couple things in the kitchen and people told me how good it was. That's all good. That's all fine. But you have never, you got the gift, but you have never developed a business plan or a strategy. And you say, well, I don't know how to do that. Surround yourself with people or somebody who knows business, who knows business plans and strategies, who knows marketing, who knows how to, you know, you, 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 oh God, you can have the gift. Come on, Holy Ghost. You can have the gift, but you don't have a strategy because you won't exercise the discipline. And so the, the gift in you just spoils. It just wastes because you didn't count the cost and exercise the discipline. You want to, now I'm giving you Bible. I'm giving you Bible. You can find that. You can find that in, um, in Luke, um, in Luke 14, Luke chapter 14, round about the 25th verse, 25th through the 30th verse. And, and Jesus says, and, and you, but if you don't begin but don't begin following me until you count the cost for who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it. Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money and then everyone would laugh at you. They would say there's a person who started that building but could not afford to finish it. Discipline. Come on. This is good tonight. This is good tonight. Number three, number three, let's go, let's go. He says, you have to, you have to know yourself and be realistic. You got to know yourself and be realistic. What can you do to set yourself up for success in the area that you need discipline? You got to know yourself and be realistic. Come on. Sometimes you got to say, I need an accountability partner because I already know that I have a tendency to quit. I already know that I have a tendency to get tempted to break this good habit and go back to my bad habits. Know yourself and be realistic. You cannot um, you cannot um, uh, say that uh, I'm going to lose 25 pounds in a week because you don't have a realistic attainable goal and, and you got to have a realistic attainable goal to say that this is achievable and I got to know myself. I got to know myself enough to set up parameters. Remember I tell you discipline sets parameters. Know yourself. Know yourself. Now, all right, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a good example, right? I uh, once When I said I wanted to, I wanted to pray more. I wanted to pray more. I wanted to pray more. I wanted to pray more than I was. Um, and initially, I said, well, God, I'm going to wake up early in the morning so I can pray more. I'm going to wake up early in the morning so I can pray more, right? And so, uh, honestly, honestly, uh, that was a miserable failure. That was a miserable failure for me because, you know, I got so much going on. I go to bed late, go to bed 11, 11.30, sometimes midnight, and then say I'm going to wake up at 5.30 or five o'clock to get in, in prayer. I'll tell you what happened over and over and over again. That snooze button kept on happening. And so if I don't be real with myself and say that that model is not going to work, then I am going to continue to fail in that discipline of prayer. So what do I have to do? I have to set up a different parameter so that I can be disciplined and, and know myself and know myself. So maybe perhaps I got to set aside some time and become less busy with with work stuff or less busy at night or turn off that TV or get off of Facebook so I can give God that 30 minutes to an hour of prayer at night because I already know it's not going to happen in the morning. 
<laughs> you got to be real, y'all. You got to be real with yourself. You got to know yourself and be real and set yourself up for for success. All right, next one. Next one. Number four, you have to make a timeline or write out steps that you are going to take towards discipline. You got to make a timeline or write out the steps. Here is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. And now I need to write out this is what I'm this is the steps that I'm going to take to get there. If you have if you have a goal but no steps, you just have a wish. If you have a if you have a vision but no plan, you just have a daydream. If you have a goal but no steps, you only have a wish. If you have a vision without a plan, you just have a daydream, a dream. I just said something. <laughs> I'm going to say that one more time. If you have a goal with no actionable steps, you just have a wish. And if you have a vision with no plan, you just have a dream, a daydream. All right. People. Oh, my God. I like that, sis. Thank you, my brother Alex, man. Write the vision and make it plain. Yeah, you got to write some stuff out. Come on, my sister Sonia. You got to schedule. Sometimes you got to schedule some things. It's nothing wrong with putting some things on schedule. I will do this every single day at 7 o'clock. I will do this on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I will do this. I don't care what comes up. I don't care who tries to break my cycle. I don't care who tries to get me off. I, this is what I am disciplined and what I will do. I will do this on this given time. Come on. Come on. Thank you. My wife. My wife put that up for me. If you have a goal with no steps, you only have a wish. Woo. Come on. My brother Alex, true action destroys procrastination. Yeah, yeah, if we're going to be anything great in God, if we're going to accomplish our goals and our dreams and our vision, if God is going to bring us into places of great anointing and a great prosperity and a great uh, 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 um, uh, fulfillment, it's only going to happen through our discipline, y'all. I'm telling you, so many of us have been bound by the spirit of procrastination We've been bound by the spirit of do nothing and nothing can be produced out of us because we don't have discipline. Uh, some of us have, are struggling in areas that we don't have to struggle in if we learn the, the dynamic of discipline. All right, I got to get out of here. All right. So you got to make a timeline and write out your steps towards your discipline. Adding structure and benchmarks to your plans will always help. All right. Woo, this is good. It, it, you, sometimes you got to get an accountability partner. Come on, my sister Lena tonight says get a mentor, someone that will call you weekly and make sure you're doing what you need to be doing. A business mentor, a spiritual mentor, a relationship, a relationship mentor, whatever your area is that you're struggling in, you got to put more emphasis on it and develop a discipline in that area. We all, oh God, thank you God. We all have strengths, but we have weaknesses. Some things come naturally to you. Some things come naturally to you. Some people clean naturally. They keep a clean house. They keep a clean car. Cleaning is just natural to them. But their discipline, their discipline might be they can clean well, but they, they won't take care of their body. They won't work out. So you got a discipline in one area, but you lack in another area. There is nothing wrong with admitting that I am good at this, but I lack discipline in this. And certain things need more focus. All right, number five. I got two more. I got two more for you. Good. Brandy, that was me. I had to find something to hold me accountable. Lord knows this is good tonight. All right, two more and then we're going. All right, next one, next one. Next one, y'all. It says, um, uh, number five, number five. In order to maintain your motivation, all right, um, and ensure, no, no, hold on, let me say this differently. You must make sure that your motivation is coming from an authentic place. This is big. You've got to make sure that your motivation is coming from an authentic place. In order to exercise discipline, 
you must make sure that your motivation is coming from an authentic place. Watch this. If your motivation is to impress people, I guarantee you that whatever you're doing, you're going, you're going to quit after a while. If your motivation is shallow, if you got shallow motives behind to be seen, to impress people, um, because somebody else said you ought to do it, to keep up with the Joneses. See, that, that's the kind of reason why we see something good and we like, ooh, I want that, or ooh, I want to do that, or I want to do that. And we try to do it, we try to walk in it, but it fizzles out fast. You want to know the reason why it fizzles out fast? Because the other person who's successful in it, their motive is, their motive is coming from a pure place. They're not doing it to impress somebody. They're not doing it because somebody said they ought to. They're doing it because they want it more than anything else in them. And that's what keeps them burning the midnight oil. That's what keeps them showing up time after time after time after it gets hard. Because if your motivation is not right, if your motivation is not coming from an intrinsic pure place, it will fizzle out. It will be like things that are on, Jesus said it's like being on rocky, like seeds on rocky ground. As soon as trouble and, and persecution comes, you, you just you bail out. But it's got to come from, from a pure place. You can't lose weight for somebody else. Oh, my God. You can't lose weight for somebody else. You can't improve yourself, yourself for somebody else. It's got to be something that you get to the point where I care about my health enough that I got to do this for me. When people go on a diet or a workout regimen, it's because they are they are they are past feeling bad and past uh, 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 being you know experiencing different things in their body. That is when it sticks. Not when somebody says, you know, girl, you getting big. That ain't going. That's not going. <laughs> That ain't going to do it because it hasn't resonated from the inside. If you do things to be seen or get the applaud of men, I know what I'm talking about. If you do things for, for I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work ministry for the applaud of men. As soon as men stop applauding you and stop giving you the credit and stop telling you you did a good job, you're, you will drop that ministry like a bad habit as soon as it gets hard because you were not in it for the right motivation. Sometimes you got to go back to the reason why you want what you want. Why do you want to be successful? Why do you want to open up that business? Why do you want to write the book? Is it because you saw somebody else do it and it looked good? You ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it because if your motive is wrong, then it will not have the sustaining power to carry you past the hard seasons. Sometimes I need to evaluate my motive. It's got to be, it's got to come from a pure place. This is good tonight. Last one, y'all. Last one. Well, no, I'm sorry. I got, uh, I got seven. I got seven. Last, last two. The next thing, number six. All right. You must, uh, you must form habits that you are going to have to continue to do until the habit becomes second nature. All right. So whenever you start any discipline initially, everything in you is going to hate it. Everything in you is going to want to buck against it. Everything in you is going to struggle with it. But after you do, you know, after you continue to do it repetitively, Forcing yourself to, to, to form the discipline, eventually what was a struggle becomes a flow. Eventually what was a struggle becomes a flow. This is why, this, you know, they say, they say, uh, the, they say things like uh, great canyons, great canyons and stuff like that, or, or how rivers, how rivers have the ability to erode rock. How rivers have the ability to break down hard things. River is a flow of water. It's, it's soft. It's, 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 it has no, no real uh, 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 solidity to it. But because it continuously flows, 
The stream of a river has the ability to erode rock and soil. It has the ability to break down because what was hard cannot resist the flow. Oh my God. What was hard cannot resist the continuous flow. And so some things you got to do and it becomes hard. You know, there's some points you might have to, you, you start working out, you start changing your spending habits, you start changing your eating habits, you start changing your habits on your job, you start changing your habits concerning your vision. And it's hard as anything at first, but what was hard becomes a flow. And anything you do long enough will begin to become second nature. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Thank you, Mika. That's what I was looking for. They say, and that's what I was looking for. You helping me tonight, sis. They say that anything that you do for 21 days will become a habit. I dare you to start doing something for 21 days straight and watch how what, what was hard begins to become, become second nature. Thank you, Mika. Y'all helping me tonight. All right. All right. So, so, so what was hard can't resist the flow. Do it until it becomes a flow. Somebody put that in the comments. Do it until it becomes a flow. Do it until it becomes a flow. Discipline. Keep doing it. It's hard. It's tearing you up. It's, it's difficult, but do it until it becomes a flow. And then the last one, very last one, and I'm through. And it says, uh, it says this, you must understand that discipline is a spiritual virtue. When the Bible talks about love, joy, peace, long suffering, that word long suffering, uh, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, temperance, faith, and meekness, uh, long suffering. There's three virtues that, that, that fit into discipline. Faith. I taught on this before. Faith is faithfulness. That means, that means committing to something even when there is no immediate reward or the, or it's when it's not convenient long suffering long suffering means the ability to endure when things are hard or when things are are adverse to your progress and then lastly temperance which is self control Temperance is self-control. So you got faithfulness, long-suffering, and temperance. All of these are spiritual virtues. So listen, you can't do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. You've been trying to exercise discipline, but you haven't, you haven't prayed to God and asked God to, to, to give you the virtue of the Spirit, to give you the anointing to walk in the discipline. So discipline is a spiritual virtue. You have to pray and you have to seek God to develop it in you. Lord, give me the faithfulness. Give me that, that, that gift, that, 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 sorry, that fruit of faithfulness, the fruit, faithfulness. Give me that long suffering. Give me that temperance, the, the ability to say no to certain things. The ability to have self-control. You know, the other day I was on um, I was uh, on my job, uh, on my job, right? And um, I've been trying to do some things better in my health, drink more water. And um, so this is just real simple. I'm getting off. Uh, somebody came around the corner. They were like, hey, hey, Fred, you know, uh, they got the job is giving away this free. Uh, I guess they, they were treating everybody to ice cream treating everybody to ice cream and all this other sweet stuff. And, you know, sometimes people, customers will come in and they'll bring their, they'll bring their donuts and stuff like that. Listen, don't nobody offer you food like when you try to say, I'm going to go on a fast. Man, when you say, I'm going to go on a fast, listen, everybody, let me, let me treat you to lunch. Or I just brought this, I brought Krispy Kreme donuts. Or, or you know, the, the job is treating everybody to, the job is treating everybody to food today. Listen, and so they had this, they had these, these sweets or whatever. And I started to say, oh, it's free. Let me go ahead and get up and, and go get that. But then I said, wait a minute, that is contrary to your goal. You're trying to shed a few pounds and tone up, work out a little bit more, drink more water. Why would you participate in something that is contrary to the vision and the goal that you said that you want? I'm getting off of here tonight. My final word is this. You need to ask the Holy Spirit to help you develop the virtues and to identify 
every area that is contrary to your purpose, every area that is contrary to your success, every area that is contrary to your progress, every area that is contrary to your deliverance, every area that is contrary to what God showed you that you can have. Lord, give us discipline. Woo! Come on. I know you feel it. I know you feel it. The Holy Spirit is blessing us tonight. I'm getting off here tonight. Listen, if you want to sow a seed, if you want to sow a seed into this word, I promise you, I promise you, you are uh, you are sowing in the good ground. God, through this series, God is going to break the spirit of procrastination. God is going to break the spirit of laziness. God is going to break the spirit of starting and then stopping. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's going to break that spirit of starting and stopping. I promise you, I don't know if this is going to be a three-part series or a four-part series, but I want to give you the keys to live, to walking in the new disciplines that is going to cause you to have more money in your pocket, that's going to cause you to have to see the, the realization of promotions and increase, that's going to cause you to be to feel better than you've ever felt in your natural body, to have the disciplines to walk out in your relationships, the discipline to maintain your deliverance, the discipline to walk in your calling. Come on. The discipline to fulfill what God has shown you to execute vision. This is going to be good. Y'all don't miss a week. Don't miss a week because it's going to be good. All right. I'm getting off of here. All of y'all who can, who are rocking with us week after week. I see you. I see your comments. I see your energy. God bless you. God bless you. God is going to do something so great in us. Dwayne, what's up, bro? <laughs> break every chain break every chain break every chain that's what god is going to do he's going to break every chain my sister sharonda said please do a four-part series <laughs> please do it in four parts oh we'll see how the lord leads us we'll see how the lord leads us i love y'all tonight i love y'all tonight my brother man alex you always got great comments lord make me blind to what may have my attention and give me your character trait to be disciplined. Woo! That's our prayer tonight. I love y'all. I'm signing off. God bless you. Until next time.